Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we will be discussing about sky wave propagation. So what do you mean by sky wave propagation? Well, let's find out. So sky wave propagation is another name given for ionospheric propagation. So here now in sky wave propagation, let us consider a transmitter and a receiver antenna on the surface of earth like this. So therefore, if this is a transmitter and a receiver, then a particular ionospheric layer will be present in the atmosphere like this. This is a sky layer or the ionospheric layer. So in sky wave propagation or ionospheric propagation, what happens is that the transmitter antenna will send the signals onto the ionospheric layer like this. And when it reaches here, it gets reflected back and it reaches the receiver that is whatever signal that is sent by the transmitter it will transmit like this 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 it will reach here it will reach the ionospheric layer and when it reaches here it will get reflected back and it reaches the receiver as simple as that this is what you refer to as sky wave propagation where this is the ionosphere so here for this particular signal to reflect at the ionosphere this signal must have a frequency ranging between 2 and 30 megahertz only if the frequency of the signal that is sent by this particular transmitter antenna is in between 2 and 30 megahertz then only it will be reflected by the ionosphere and when it gets reflected it will be received by the receiver now if the frequency of the signal that is generated by the transmitter is greater than 30 megahertz what happens is that reflection does not happen and therefore the signal will penetrate the ionosphere and go into space. That is what happens if the frequency becomes greater than 30 megahertz. So now here we saw that this particular ionospheric layer has a huge significance here. So now let us see how this particular ionospheric layer is formed. So for that first let us consider the earth's surface like this. Let us consider the curved earth surface and now on top of this the atmospheric layers would be present like this. So let these be the atmospheric layers. So in the atmosphere there will be certain atoms that will be present and here we could observe that the density of these atoms will reduce as it moves away from the earth. That is if we take this layer the density would be very much maximum. That is a large number of atoms will be present here but when we go to the next layer comparatively lesser number of atoms will be present here because the density of atoms will be lesser in the next layer. So here as you guys can see the number of atoms are less and now when we go to the outermost layer the density of atoms will be even more less. So when you see here the number of atoms are even more less that is the density is the least at the topmost layer. So now let's see how the ionospheric layers are produced. So we know that we have a powerful source which is referred to as the sun. So the sun shines brightly on the earth's surface. So when sun shines brightly on the earth's surface the sun produces certain rays called cosmic rays and these cosmic rays fall on top of the atmosphere of our earth. So at the topmost layer the density of these cosmic rays would be the maximum that is a large number or a huge number of cosmic rays would be present at the topmost layer. So these are the cosmic rays from the sun that falls on the topmost layer. So what happens here is that when this cosmic ray strikes this particular atom when this cosmic ray strikes a particular atom, it will eject an electron out of this atom. So when an electron is ejected out of this atom, this atom becomes an ion. So that is this atom thus becomes a charged ion. So here in the topmost layer, the number of atoms are very few and therefore these cosmic rays interact with these atoms and therefore a less dense ionization layer is formed over here. So now after these cosmic rays interact with this layer a comparatively lesser amount of cosmic rays would then fall on the next layer and therefore when these cosmic rays falls on these particular atoms it will again form another ionization layer over here. And after ionization happens here then the cosmic rays will further fall on the bottommost layer over here and then ionization happens. But 
when it reaches here only a very few amount of cosmic rays would reach here and therefore only very few atoms would get ionized over here so therefore when you observe this the topmost layer will have a very less ionization density because the number of atoms are less now when you observe the middlemost layer ionization density would be comparatively more and now when you observe the lowermost layer since the number of cosmic rays are less the ionization density would also be less so this thus is how the various ionization layers are produced so now let us consider transmitter antenna over here and let this transmitter antenna be generating a signal of 2 megahertz frequency then if it is generating a signal of 2 megahertz frequency and if it sends it to the ionosphere it would get reflected back by the lowermost layer and thus it would go like this now let us assume that the transmitter is generating a signal of 15 megahertz then if it is 15 megahertz then it would penetrate the first layer but when it reaches the second layer it would get reflected back like this so what you can observe here is that as the frequency increases the range is also increasing so now if the transmitter antenna generates a signal of 30 megahertz frequency then it will penetrate the second layer but it could get reflected at the uppermost or the topmost layer and it gets reflected like this having even more range hence as the range can be increased this is used for longer distance communication so here we saw that the frequency range varies from 2 megahertz to 30 megahertz but if this transmitter antenna is generating a signal which is greater than 30 megahertz what happens is that it would penetrate the first layer then it would penetrate the second layer it would also penetrate the third layer and it will go to space it won't come back to the surface of the earth it would go to space we will lose that signal if that signal is greater than 30 megahertz now the next obvious question that you should be asking yourself is how does this reflection happen how how does this reflection happen this is not a mirror at the end of the day this is the atmosphere how does the atmosphere reflect these signals well now let's go back to 12th standard physics so now let us consider two mediums that is one denser medium and a rarer medium so this is a denser medium and this is a rarer medium and now in the earth's atmosphere when we go up the atmosphere the density decreases therefore in the lower regions of the atmosphere the atmosphere is denser whereas in the uppermost regions of the atmosphere the atmosphere is rarer so in 12th standard physics we have seen that when a particular signal is, is transmitted from a denser medium to rarer medium and if it falls on the interface at an angle greater than the critical angle theta c then it would get reflected back that is the principle that happens here that is if a particular transmit antenna transmits a signal at an angle greater than the critical angle theta c then it would get reflected back and it reaches the receiver and therefore thus we can say that the range is controlled by two parameters two parameters first one being the frequency of the wavelength we saw that as the frequency increases the range increases so the first parameter is the frequency of the wavelength and the second parameter is this angle that is the angle of propagation as the angle of propagation increases the range also increases so guys this is some sort of sky wave propagation or ionospheric propagation i hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you mean by sky wave propagation and we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos so stay tuned and i'll see you guys in the next videos thank you